While I can't expect every one of you to have the same level of affinity that I have towards M4s or ARs in general, I do suspect that you and I do have a few things in common, at least two things in common. The first thing is, well, we both like guns, right? And the second thing is, we both like video games and science fiction, right? Back in 2018, ASG teased us with something that had a bit of both. They had tight geometric lines, modern designs, coupled with a bulgy, curvaceous front that just made you want to go and grab it. Nowadays, us that play Airsoft, we want a little bit more than just a superficial, flashy flash. We want something with a bit more substance. And does the latest offering from ASG's AEG line live up to that? Over the past little bit of time, every time that I've held this gun, I felt like I've been in some video game or some alien themed science fiction movie. If I was a modern day director looking for a gun that could fill that kind of futuristic need, this one would be really, really high up on my list. I mean, it won't be the first time that movie studios have done that. We all know that the Star Wars guns are basically old World War II guns with a bit of touch and, you know what? We all know that, right? We all know that. Anyways, getting back to my point, she sure is a looker with all these tight geometric lines, modern designs. Let's see if this gun really deserves all the hype. The Hera Arm CQR is a very unique rifle, and its real steel counterpart comes from Germany. The unique design of the CQR came from Hera's decision to make advanced ergonomics and superior handling of their weapon their top priority. And you can see this with designed in Germany or made in Germany engraved proudly all over the place. When I think of Germany, oftentimes I think of Bauhaus design. Bauhaus design was the most preeminent school of thought in terms of design that propagated far and wide out of Germany after World War II. And we can see that through Bauhaus design, it becomes very quintessential to what Germans do today. The design school of thought is very minimalistic, very straight line oriented, very, well, very German. Some might say that the design here is a bit busy, just a bit. And there's more going on here than necessary. The rear certainly looks German with its straight and eyebrow raising geometric designs, but the front looks something more of what we would see out of North America that favors more comfort and a more organic look as you can see with all the curves. It seems a bit like putting the rounded front of a Volkswagen Beetle with the beautiful yet angular rear end of a Lamborghini Countach, if you know what I mean. So now that we've established that this poor gun has got an angular butt and a very curvaceous front end, what it can be said though, is it's solid. There is no wobble to this thing. I am not too big of a fan of how the magazine looks because it's really not looking like anything specifically in the real world, close enough because, you know, the real gun probably most definitely will run a PMAG, if anything. But what I do want to say is kudos to ICS for making this 20 round style magazine that holds 300 rounds in it. So it's a high cap mag and it just fits the overall aesthetic of the gun, making this gun really look handsome. So visual design contradictions aside, there is a reason to why this gun looks like this. And we're going to get into it right now. For a gun that is designed to be used in close quarters, the decision to have a more or less fixed length of pull is an interesting one, but you're able to tuck the gun in quite well. The thumb hole foregrip also allows for several different styles of hold, from a traditional style to facilitate more of a modern style to whatever else style you want. In fact, the closer you look 
you might even imagine yourself holding an oversized P90. As much as I like this gun in shooting stance, I'm also not quite sure about its wraparound rear grip, which is very handsome to look at, but it inhibits a little bit of wrist movement. It really does. If you see me maneuver, you'll know why. Or even if you rest the sling on my torso, it does get in your way of your wrist. But hey, we're here to shoot the gun, not rest it, right? But shooting, aiming, and pointing this gun, oh, it's a whole different story. It actually offers substantial wrist support for steadier aim. All right, now that we have established why this gun is ergonomically unique and works, let's talk about what you're getting out of this gun. Being a fully licensed product and joint collaboration between ASG and ICS, you're getting a fully licensed gun with all the correct markings that correspond to the real one. That means you're gonna get all like the hair arms markings on the lower receiver, on all the stocks, as well as really unique, the 15th marking right here on the lower receiver, which pays homage to the AR-15. With there, there's some few other design subtleties to this gun that really make it a standout, handsome looking piece of machinery. Let's look at this rail right here. The words Hera are engraved to the front of the rail. It's subtle, but it does really bring a lot of character to the rail. And the rail itself, how it is designed, man, it looks like, let's be honest, it looks almost like a Fortis rail and it looks very good and just completes the overall look of the gun. With the Hera Arm CQR, you've got to appreciate the details. The QD ambidextrous sling mounts, rear slots, and this aluminum spacer are the same as what their real steel gun uses and you get extra durability of all the parts that might otherwise strip, crack, break under stress if they're made from cheaper materials. Actually, if you count the number of sling mounts, there's like a total of nine of them. Internally, the gun runs the ICS split gearbox system, as you can see right here, slightly inspired by the PTW, as you can see as well. The gun we have here today also features ICS's electronic trigger called the S3 system. And this is their latest version that does some pretty cool stuff. So make sure you keep watching to find out more. The claim to fame for this type of system is it allows you, the user, to clean, repair, or upgrade your gearbox much easier than traditional gearboxes would. The flash hider sits on a 14 millimeter counterclockwise thread that you can change that out and put a suppressor on if you want. And finally, we're gonna get down to the hop-up. You can find that hop-up right here. Pull the charging handle back, and you can access that rotary hop up right there in the brief. The meat of this AEG is actually its electronic trigger system. It features a self-diagnostic system and programmable firing modes. How do they all work? How do you set them up, you may ask? It's time for a Gambit's Guide. Let my buddy Gambit show you guys just how it's done. Before we get to any chrono or shooting, I want to show you guys how you install the battery into this Hera CQR. Sadly, it's not the easiest thing to do. Of all the cool features, this is the one that I feel like is kind of a little man. You need an Allen key to unscrew the two screws back here. I really wish that they would have made this an easier process for everybody. So after you unscrew the two screws, release the rubberized butt pad, you can put your battery right here. Now there's a lot of room here for a large battery. So if you guys are running Titan power batteries, you're not gonna have a problem whatsoever. I'm using 0.2 gram BBs and an 11.1 .1 battery. So it's time in the video where I talk about the accuracy of the gun. I'm really excited to shoot it. We have an IPSC target down there that we used from the Shadow 2 review, so let's not put it to waste. You hear that? 
That was the gun decocking itself, and that was a really cool feature that they have with this particular gun. The furniture feels very nice, and the rubberized texturing on the pistol grip really makes the shooting experience comfortable. And the foregrip, well, it's, it's actually not bad. One thing that I don't really like, though, is the controls feel a little bleh. I would really hope that I really hope that they were nicer, but I'm pretty sure some of you guys that know how to switch out controls and triggers and so on know exactly how to do that. These sights are also very easy to read and they click into place really nicely. They also have a small like a notch up front, just like a pistol would. And the stock feels very comfortable. The rubberized stock really gives you a little bit more sure grip. Let's finish this guy off. Nice. Let's quickly go take a look at the accuracy and I'm going to show you what it shoots like full auto. After a few practice shots as you can see here, a lot of my shots landed dead center with a lot of them actually hitting the same hole. So you're going to get a good amount of accuracy out of the hair arms. I am pleasantly impressed. Now full auto. For an EBB. I wish the impulse was a little stronger, but I can't complain. I'm gonna keep it 100 with you guys. This gun has been full of surprises, whether in terms of ergonomics, how it's shot, even down to this little piece right here. If I can get it open. It's actually exposes some Picatinny rails, so you can put a monopod there if you wanna use it for some sniping. And another gun from ASG that was a pleasant surprise and full of surprises was the Scorpion Evo. If you want to check out that video that Tim and I did, click on the card above. It was the one with the carbines. And now that Tim is not here, I can definitively call it a car bean. Moving along then. So the Hera CQR, where does it fit in the grand scheme of things? I mean, other than the fact that if you want to go cosplay your favorite Call of Duty Advanced Warfare Soldier, or maybe Halo's Master Chief, you got your gun here. But more importantly, what I feel like the Hera can fill is a very unique niche for a lot of airsoft players out there. A lot of players getting into our sport and our hobby needs a good looking yet affordable entry point. And while this is the gun that features the S3 trigger, which is a little bit more expensive, their entry level is definitely something easy and great looking for a lot of entry level players to try or pick up. So beauty is really in the eyes of the beholder. I really think this is a very handsome, very good looking gun. So kudos to ICS and ASG for bringing out something that is a little bit more unique to brighten up and freshen up, or as some would say, spruce up the old AR. But what do you guys think? Call of Duty, Halo, or would even some of you guys as more serious players consider this particular AEG? Let me know all that in the comment section below. My name is Mark, aka Blue Steel. I'll catch you guys on the next episode of Red Bull TV. Have a good one, guys. I can't, you know, I don't know. I'm a Halo guy myself, so where's that for me?